every day as I travel through this land. I wish my sweat but got up pulled into his hand. But the journey almost over, and the battle dearly won. I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk through heaven's gate. For the first time I see Jesus, I can hardly wait. He'll show me to my mansion, say this is your home. I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come. I'm standing now on Jordan's lake, and the waves are rolling tide. Storms of life are raging, but I'm happy down inside. I see the life go coming to take me, take me home. I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk through heaven's gate. For the first time I see Jesus, I can hardly wait. He'll show me to my mansion and say this is your home. I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come. I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come. Good morning, church. Good morning. You can be in God's house this morning. Amen. I'd rather be here than the finest prison or the finest jail or the finest hospital or the finest nursing home. Okay. I'd rather be here. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Amen. It's good to see Brother Bruce with us this morning. Amen. And uh, my sister Frankie, glad to have her. Just hope everybody's had a good and blessed week this year. We've been blessed with company out of Oregon all week. They're still at the house. They, they won't come to church with us, but maybe we can say something or to do something while they're there. Just keep uh, making realize they need the Lord in their life. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming to church this morning. Yeah, it is. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Joel. Chapter 2. And I'll start reading about verse 28. I hate we was out last Sunday, but the Lord knows all about it. Had a bad head cold and couldn't hardly stand up. Got about passing out. I was so terrible when you get in that shape. The Lord knows all about it. I'm glad I serve one that can heal. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But y'all pray for me this morning. I still got a bad run of the nose, so I may have to run it down after a while. <laughs> But uh, looking in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered as the Lord has said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call our precious heavenly father Lord as we come to you this morning God I just pray Lord that you would speak the words this morning Lord that 
This congregation needs to hear from you. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word, which in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. You know, my last message was on the great falling away. But it tells us here in Joel that God is going to send his spirit down upon us. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. You know, a lot of people don't believe in prophesying. They say that's 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 a thing of the past. But I believe they're still prophesying to me prophesy and see the future and help us be ready for the future. I believe that the return of God, the return of Jesus is very soon upon us. But I know my wife has dreamed very often about the end times and uh, A lot of people say, well, that's strange. But I believe God gives people the sight to see a little bit about what's going to happen so they can be better, better prepared. I'm looking for them. I've said this many times. I'm looking for them today. If he don't come today, I'll be looking for him tonight. If he don't come tonight, I'll be looking for him in the morning. And so on, and so on. I'm never going to give up looking for him. Because I know how the shape this world is in. And his coming can't be very far off. Every time you turn the TV on, now you don't get nothing but bad news. More and more freedom is being taken away. They're saying now that it's not going to be but just a few months till the government's going to have control of our bank account. The government is trying their best to take control. What we own, what we do with what we own. You know, back in the 50s, back in the 60s, you know, you could build a house, build it the way you wanted. You didn't have to go down and get no permit to build a house. You didn't have to get no permit to put a septic tank in. Look at it today. I don't know what it costs for a, a septic tank to come in. They don't tell me what it costs for to come in. But you got to get a permit to build a house. And once you get, start building on that house, they have to come and inspect every level that you do to that house. When you get your walls up, they come and inspect it. When you Run your water, they come back and inspect. Then you gotta have a final inspection before they allow the fire to be turned on. A man or a woman don't have no rights to that. Everything has to be okayed by somebody else before you do anything. We don't have no freedom. And we have very limited religious freedom. I can't even upload a video on YouTube anymore. Because of the video that I load up, this church comes to. 
the last four services I've tried to upload, when I hit the upload button, after I choose the file, it just sat there. It won't even upload. We're getting our freedom. Keep away from us. Day by day. Now I can I can go out in town and video one of their uh what do they call them things? Uh, gatherings. You know, where they have a celebration on something. And go home and edit it and put it on upload and it'll load right up. But every time that I try to upload a church service, it just sits there. It won't start uploading. Now you tell me how they know what's on that video before it even starts uploading. And they can block. That's beyond me because the way technology is, I guess they can do that. But we have no right to the Lord. Everything has been taken away. But I thank God for his promises. I believe before Jesus comes back that every eye, eye will see, every ear will hear the word of God. I believe that that's going to happen. And we've got the technology today to make it happen. We've got the internet. And the internet's in every country in this world. Every eye can see and every ear can hear the word of God. And the Bible tells us when that, when every ear hears the word of God, that's when Jesus is going to return. People, it is on us. It is up. The day is up on us. Like I said a while ago, it could be today. Or it could be tomorrow. But it's going to be real close when the Lord comes. Look at verse 30. It says, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. In the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood. Back in 2017, we had that total eclipse of the sun. It turned dark for what? 20, <coughs> maybe 30 seconds. But it turned completely dark in the middle of the day. I've never seen that before. Last, was it last week or week before last? We had another blood boom. We, we've had there are quite a few of them here lately. Where well, the moon turns red, they call it a blood moon. This is fulfillment of the Bible. This is telling us that the day of the Lord is very near upon us. And yet, people just wander to and fro, having no worries. Never have God on their heart. Or in their mind. That's like this, this family that was standing with us. I thought they was Christian. But we started getting ready for church last night. They just kept sitting there. And I wasn't going to force them to go. But I wasn't going to stay home with them either. When we got ready for church, we got up and then we went to church. Left them sitting there. Same thing this morning. We went even out of bed whenever we left this morning. But I hope and pray I can say something to them before they leave. Makes them realize how short time is and how they need Jesus in their life. 
I don't see how anybody can go through life without longing to know the Lord. I couldn't go two, uh, two minutes without the Lord's help. I depend on him every hour of every day to get me through. And I can't do it on my own. I need the Lord. I need him in my life. I thank God I had a praying mother that prayed for me. And I thank God that because of her prayer, I was led to the altar. And I knelt and asked God into my life. I thank God he called me to preach. The first thought in my mind when he called me was, Lord, I can't preach. And I can't. It's got to come from God. I can't preach. If I stood up here on my own without <clears throat> trusting in Him to lead me, every one of you done walked out on me if I tried to do it on my own. But I thank God that He leads us and He directs us on what to say when we get up here. He gives us a message. And there's a lot of times that I kind of lose track of where I'm at and what I'm doing. He's already back. He put me back on track when I kind of lose my flow. You know, I've got, I've got some memory problems. And it scares me to death that one Sunday I'm gonna I'm gonna stand here. When I think about this, it scares me to death. But I'm scared to death that one Sunday I'm gonna get up here and stand and I'm gonna lead y'all astray. That scares me. But as long as I can put my trust in God, I believe he's gonna lead me in the way that I need to lead you. I mean, I can't lead you. The only thing I can do is just preach the word to you. But I believe that God will give me the word as long as I'm willing to stand. God will lead and guide and direct me to the right way. You know, it's terrible when, when you're sitting at home and, and you're talking to people because you don't know what you're saying. I mean, your mind fails and you have to really stop it. Where am I at? What am I doing? I get like that a lot. And it scares me. Now, what if I do that on Sunday morning when I'm up there trying to preach? That's why I have to keep my eyes on God. That's why I got to put all of my trust in Him. Because if I try to do it on my own, I'm just going to make a big mess of everything. Because I know what will happen. I'll be right in the middle of saying something and my mind will just go blank. And then what's going to happen? What's wrong with him? <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. You know, 
just about all of our senators and all, well, I guess even the president are all 100% against Israel. We're, st we're supposed to stand behind Israel. I believe Israel is God's chosen country. Because that's where Jesus was born. In Bethlehem. In Israel. I believe that's God's chosen country. And we should stand behind Israel. And support Israel. Not to try to tie it down. Do away with it. Of course... They're going to wait with everything else that's been different, so I guess that's common sense to try to do away with Israel. It's just trying to do away with the Bible completely. But this nation has got to get back on track. How can we expect God to bless a nation? When the nation don't even respect God the most. Try to do away with everything that has to do with God. <coughs> you know, when 9 11 hit, everybody, everybody was on their knees praying. Soon after that, nation never forgot about it right here. Went back to their old ways. You know, God destroyed the Sodom and the Lord for the lifestyle that they was living. And I believe this world is wickeder today than it was then. I don't know that because I wasn't there in Solomon the Lord. But I do believe that. But it's in worse shape than they were. And God's going to destroy this world. This world as a whole is going to pay for their sin. That's why I believe they can still be proud of their holiness. Even Moses, Jesus would step out and be proud to do it. Amen. We need to be ready. I don't, I don't have my doubts. Anybody in here? No, no. I have no doubt about that. I believe everybody in here is saved. I believe everybody in here knows the Lord as their Savior. Amen. And that's a good thing. That's a wonderful thing. It's a glorious thing. We all can say if Jesus came today, we'd be in heaven. What about the rest of this world? Where are they going to be? That's why we need to witness to everybody we see. As the old song goes, preach it from the housetop. Tell the world Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Well, that's just like whenever we were sitting at home yesterday, we were trying to speak like that. You know, uh, they were that speaking in Greenland down there, but they were packed. And oh, they said, the Lord called them to come church again. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, our last thing, we had a full house. 
Not everyone like that. But the ones that was here were the ones I guess the Lord intended to bring you through that. But we still had a good service. We had some awesome singing. Well, the, 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 the first group was awesome. But Everybody minded the Lord. We had a good time. Spirit was here. Amen. Spirit was here. You know, it don't matter. If we'd have had to went out to the trailer out there and brought out children, that'd have been fine. It don't matter if there's two in here. It don't matter if there's a hundred. God is going to be here. But in this day and age, it's hard to get a church house filled. It is. Everybody's got everything in the world to do. If you mention going to church, you know, just, it's just like they shut down. They can't comprehend the word going to church. Let's go to church. And they'll just sit there like a mule looking at a new game. And you can bring up another subject and they they know more about it than anybody else, you know. But you mentioned going to church, and it's just like they shut down. Nobody wants to talk about church. I get excited about going to church. I get excited when I think of what God's done for me. I can't help but get excited. I mean, when you sit in a wheelchair for four years and you can't walk and God brings you out of that chair, that's something to get excited about. Praise God. Because if it hadn't been for him, I'd still be in that wheelchair. I was more or less just homebound for those four years because it was so hard on Tandy to get me out, get me loaded up, put the wheelchair in, and then get what we was doing after. Pull that wheelchair out. Had to pull me out of the car and get me turned around to where I could sit back down in the wheelchair. Then climb around the wheelchair and put my legs in the stirrups and then push it so <coughs> heavy. And I was heavy, heavier then than I was now because I wasn't getting no exercise. I was close to 300 pounds. I remember one time we went to hell in Georgia. And I thought she was going to have a heart attack. Because just about every street down there has got a hill to it. And when you're pushing 350 pounds, that ain't no job for no woman. <laughs> that ain't a job for a man, much less a woman. But I thank God. He allowed me to get up and walk again and touch me. And that's something to get excited about. He was trying to show you something. He wasn't through with you. That's exactly what he was showing me. He wasn't through with me. But if it hadn't been for him and his mercy and his grace, I wouldn't be standing here today. <laughs> and it's beyond me that anybody could see this happen and still not believe. <coughs> Hello. 
I need to wait. You know what I mean? But man, you know what I'm right here, if you call from the name of the Lord, you shall be saved, right? Amen. Right. And we do. Don't people have things apart, you know, the world, and the other thing. The way the world is now, people are falling away from us. Amen. That was the message. You know, two weeks ago. You know, the great falling away. Yeah. And you know, that's what Christians, we look at it and try to, you know, make it better for people. But we can't. People got to be on their own. They got to, they got to go to the Lord and be saved themselves. You can't just say, there you're going to be saved. Yeah. You can't say that. It's got to be Daniel one said, I forgive me of my sins. Right. And see, we can't do the world like that. Yeah. I've seen preachers go down and drive somebody to the altar. That ain't doing nobody no good. You can't force somebody to be saved. They have got to want to come on their own. Now, if the Lord tells me to go talk to somebody during a service, I'll go talk to them. But I'm not going to take them by the hand and drag them to the altar. They've got to want to come to that altar on their own. And I've heard preachers tell them what to pray. You can't pray nobody into heaven. You can't pray nobody's salvation for them. They have to ask God their self. They've got to repent of their sins and they've got to tell God that they believe in I could I could bring somebody up here and pray for them till I'm blue in the face. But until they ask God their self to forgive them of their sins and come in and save their soul, they're going to be just as lost when they get up as they was when they went away. I believe why people are not getting saved anymore. You got to worry things on them now. Amen. You know? A lot of people put worry things in front of God and that thing, you know. Like, you know, today, you know, people then time, they're going to kill. Right. And you know, two, you've got worldly preachers. You got waters are firming down and sugar coats it because they don't want to offend nobody. Well, I must offended you two because they won't let me upload them on the church uh, 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 services. But if I offended them, tough. I'm not apologizing. Because I believe that what I preach, I believe it comes strictly from God. And as long as I stand on the Word of God, in my messages. I'm not apologizing to nobody. If the governor comes here today and says, you can't stand in that pulpit no more because of what you preach. Tough. I'm not apologizing for it. Because I preach what God gives me and I can back every word that I say up with this Bible. And I'm not apologizing. Now there may be a time to come that I may get all, a little off kilter a little bit. But I believe I've got godly men in this church that will set me straight if I do. And I expect that. If I, te if I preach something and can't back it up, I expect the men of this church to take me aside and give me a good talking to. <laughs> and show me where I'm wrong. And I believe that they'd do that. <laughs> I'm not going to test them. I don't want to answer to God for teaching something that ain't so. I want to be in God's will as 
especially when I'm behind this pulpit. But this nation has got to do a complete 180 in order for God to bless this nation. They've got to turn around 180 degrees from where they're at right now. Because every time you turn on the news, they're trying something else to take the dignity out of God. The dignity out of God's Word. And God ain't going to put up with it much longer. I don't see how He put up with it as long as we have. Because if it's left up to me, Jesus would already come back. But I, I get fed up real easy with the world and the way they carry on and conduct business anymore. But that's the message I know it's